Okay guys, so welcome to this video. Now I hinted at the end of the last video that I was going to be talking about this and to be honest with you, I just want to test this out. I want to know if this is bullshit or if it's actually really, really cool. The one reason that I want to test this is this word right here, pseudocode. Now, one thing that you may have noticed with all of these building things is that they always build and they always use placeholder code, right? Or if they're not using placeholder code, it's like they only code like the, the outline. They don't actually code all of the functionality that is needed to do something. This is one thing that augment code does very, very well. Now what I wanted to do is test out in this video whether this Spark, create Spark, NPX create Spark thing, which is a Roo code like um, customized mode, whether it's actually as good as people are saying it is. So we're gonna be testing this out in today's video. Just a quick shout out to my school community. Guys, you guys really are keeping me motivated, so shout out to all of you. If you wanna join, it'll be the first link in the description of this video. Okay, so this should have a pretty, pretty simple setup. I should have everything needed here. You literally just run npx create spark in it. So let's go to Visual Studio Code here. And we will go to Terminal, New Terminal. And I should be able to run this because I should have Node uh, and everything installed. So we'll just do this. This should just automatically add everything. So if I just say yes here, Rue has also just uh, released something. What is this creating a new name? Okay, there we go. So that now created that. So now if I click here, I might have to quit out. So let's just quit out and then open up Visual Studio Code again. Go to Roo. And then this should be here. If not. Okay, so we've opened up this new folder here. Now if I run this, this should work. Okay. So this gave us Roo modes and Roo. Okay, so yeah, now that I've done that, if I go on Roo, then you can see we actually have this um, Spark Orchestrator mode. Okay, so I want to know if this is actually going to live up to the hype or not. So we're going to run, first of all, do we need any MCPs? I don't think so. I do want to quickly just go through this and see how this MCP system works. I should just be able to run configure MCP and it should be able to read my files automatically. Discover available MCP servers. No. Let's control C that. Let's do that again. What are the other options? Okay, so this is pretty interesting. Um, let's just do this and type fetch. Okay, so the MCPs, I'm not going to be going into MCPs with this in today's video just because I actually don't need to. That's not what I'm testing. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my school community. I'm going to grab this prompt, which is a service-based website, and I'm just going to feed this entire thing. I'm going to say, you will have to make a new project. Be aware of this. And then give it a unique name. So there's no what's the word no uh repeat file folder names on my system already okay so let's test this out i'm curious about this we are using a cheap model just so you know we're using gemini flash so it, i mean it, we'll see how that goes basically so okay we'll just change to um gemini 2.5 pro just Let's just see if this works. Okay, so let's see this in action. Why is it telling me to do this? Can I not run this itself? I'll just run it, whatever it's telling me to run it. So, so it's in the luxury car rental campani directory. So we'll wait for this to finish. I don't mind it doing like that necessarily. It's not a big problem. Okay, so this should finish. Okay, so yes, I've created. I wonder if Ru will add this as an official mode or not. Well, we need to see how it goes first. I didn't CD, 
So I'll just do CD as well. There we go. That's creating a subtask. Create the specification pseudocode for the luxury car rental companion SGS project. Project goal, framework. Okay, so it's creating like a skeleton, right? It's pseudocode. Pseudocode just means like, it's like testable pra practice code just to see how far you can get in the project, right? It's like MVP kind of thing. So certain things I'm kind of messing up a little bit because I have like, I have memory code mode and things like that in my system prompt. Doesn't seem to be having a particularly negative effect on this mode. So it's created a document here and then it's creating even more documents. This is pretty cool. Um, what is this specification writer? So this is like, this is a whole new mode, right? This is really interesting. Damn, this is where this stuff starts to feel a bit like AGI, I'm not gonna lie. Damn, it's like, God, I'm just gonna let, I'm gonna see how this goes. I'm not gonna get too excited. Okay, damn, this is like beyond anything I've ever seen before. This is absolutely crazy. If this works exactly like this properly and codes all of this, my head just exploded, basically. This is insane, literally. <laughs> Damn, this is actually crazy. This is crazy. Wow. Okay, so I just went for a shower, had got myself a cup of coffee. That was probably about 15 minutes. This mofo is still going, which is both a good and a bad thing. It's probably going to cost a lot, but I think this might be the most detailed version of this website that I will have ever got. We will wait and see until we say that, but it, it's looking good, guys. Okay, this is the moment of truth. Let's find out if this was actually worth anything. Okay, so there's an error. That's okay. It's not a huge issue. This was actually free, I think, right? Because I used Gemini Preview? I'm not actually sure. Um... Oh, I probably need to do npm install. npm install. npm in there, let's see. Okay, no. So we just need to fix this, that's fine. I'll just give this error to the coder. Oh, right, okay, I just needed to install that. Okay, that's okay. We've still got a few errors here. If I now do control C here, it should fix all these errors, hopefully. No, so I'll just copy all these. A few more errors than I would have expected, but that's okay. Let's just send all these to Spark. It did automatically redirect it slash en, which is very cool. Not many um, coding things have managed to actually do that. Okay, so look guys, this has got stuck in some kind of loop. This does happen with uh, Next.js sometimes. Basically what I think happened was it created, at the very beginning of the project, it created a Next.js at latest. And I specifically told it to use 14.2.23 or whatever. However, I do think this has a lot of potential. I'm going to test this out on a few other things. I'm not going to just give up on this. And I do think this is going to be absolutely insane. I'm going to test this on the WordPress build next. Um, because I think that's a little bit more understandable for a project. I think this old prompt is actually quite confusing. I didn't create the project first. I should have created at Next.js app 14.2.23 or whatever I always use. But I didn't. However, I still think people want to see this. I still think this is going to be one of the better ways to create code. And I'm going to go and test this out as soon as possible on a WordPress website. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of this video, you're an absolute legend. Definitely check out this project. It does seem very, very interesting. Definitely check out the school as well. And if you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend. And I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.